We have a serious problem and it's not going away anytime soon. This problem is insidious. It permeates all throughout our society and has consequences for the future. If we don't address this problem soon, we will regret it. But the issue is, most of us aren't even aware of how much of a problem this is. We undervalue the next generation. Is this a new problem? No, but it might be worse than ever right now. So let's discuss it. It is vital for any economy to nurture the next generation, educate them and help them to become the best versions of themselves. This is a win-win. The population is better and as a consequence, they contribute more back. But we are not doing a good job of this. In fact, we are placing unnecessary roadblocks to stop the next generation from doing well. The combination of the extraordinary rise in the cost of living, with the housing market being one of the worst examples of this, combined with the pathetic rise in wages over decades, has left the next generation in a quandary. What should they do? Should they follow their passion and struggle through life because of it? Or should they prioritize jobs that pay more and help to compensate for these additional burdens? Well, the problem is that too many people may choose the latter. This has serious consequences for many different aspects of our society. One prominent issue that has some serious long-term consequences is scientific research. We undervalue science significantly, but the worst way that we do this is in how we undervalue PhD students. So why should you even care? Well, PhD students are meant to be the next generation of talented people that might change the world completely from their discoveries. This covers so many things, new technologies, cures for cancer, reversing climate change, or even solving problems that we don't know we have yet. A lot of major historical discoveries were made by people during their PhD, not as a professor. But instead of allowing them the opportunity to do this research, we pay them so little that they can be living below the poverty line, making their lives so much more stressful and difficult than it needs to be. To make it worse, when this topic is brought up, senior academics can respond with comments like, you shouldn't even care about money. You should do it for the love of science. Well, of course, that's easy to say when you aren't living below the poverty line. So how bad is it, I hear you ask? Well, like the answer to many of these questions, it really depends on where you live. Even in the US, it varies greatly. And this became very apparent during the pandemic. If we compare the PhD salary to the cost of living, which is the amount needed to pay for typical basic costs at a given location, we see that a lot of universities are paying significantly below this level. But don't think that this is a uniquely American problem. This is a global issue. Some countries like Germany have relatively competitive salaries for PhD students. Paying their PhD student at 96% of the average salary of the country. But this depends on if you receive the full amount, which in Germany is not a given, and many students earn much less than this. But on the other side, countries like the UK pay 47% of the average salary. Australia is even worse, paying just 30% of the average salary. This problem can be boiled down to the fact that wages of PhD students have been trailing behind average salaries. In Australia, PhD salaries are below and even being outpaced by the minimum wage. This is a big problem. We are saying that the next generation of scientific leaders are not even worth the minimum wage. In fact, one report in the UK suggested that PhD students should find additional work to deal with the increases in living costs. They even suggest the students some options. They could sell Avon products, they could do pet sitting, or they could even join clinical trials. Wow. So why is it like this? We think of PhD students as purely students, as if that's all they are. 
and that because they are learning, that they aren't worth much. But this greatly underestimates the contributions that they can make and the skills that they develop. To illustrate this, we just have to compare the salaries of a PhD student in their final year to that of a postdoctoral researcher. At the end of their PhD, they have the same skills as when they start their postdoc. But in some countries, the ratio of these salaries is around three. As a postdoc, they make three times more money than as a PhD student. Isn't this a mind-bogglingly large difference? Clearly, the difference in their skills is not three times. But the way that we value these two roles is completely different. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. If we continue to undervalue the next generation of scientists, we will lose so much. We will go back to the position where science was an occupation only for the rich. Instead, we need to get as many great minds into science as possible so that they can solve problems that will help all of us and that we can get a better understanding of the universe that we live in. Unfortunately, this is not the direction that we're heading in. So, what can we do about it? To see real change, we need to have politicians that value science and see the value that science can give back to the society. In many countries, the power for this change lies with these politicians. If you want to see some change, write to your local politicians. Many of them have easy ways to do this. But of course, this change is not going to be easy. There are many issues with undervaluing science. Another way is the way that we fund science in general. Check out this video if you want to know more about how bad this is. And thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.